Transmitting to you live from the Queen City. Streaming to the world and beyond. This is the Traders Vibe Video Podcast Show. We talk and you listen. And now, here's your host, Carl Berger, a.k.a. Chaos Trader. All right, welcome to the Traders Video Podcast Show today. My name is Carl Bridget, also known as Chaos Trader 63. Every week, I am bringing you some of the most prominent traders in the business, and today I want to bring to you Carolyn Borodin, aka Fibonacci Queen. Carolyn is a commodities trading advisor who started her trading career on the floors of the CME. Carolyn is a top-notch technical analysis who specializes in advanced Fibonacci trading, trading strategy. In addition, she has her own book entitled Fibonacci Trading, How to Master the Time and Price Advantage. She's also a frequent guest on Jim Cramer's Off the Chart segment on Mad Money. She focuses on the ratios derived from the Fibonacci number series, and she applies these ratios on both the price and time axis of the market to identify trade setups. Carolyn, first, I want to welcome you and thank you for being a guest on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming here. Um, I know you got a busy schedule, so we want to let people understand who you are and what you do. Um, I know a lot of people probably already know about you, but I know a lot of people sometimes are a little bit, um, especially newer traders, don't really understand much about Fibonacci. So we're going to get into that. But before we do that, just give us a back a, a brief history of who you are, how you got started and everything. Okay, well, I mean, I told you that I was going to tell you the truth. And it's... Uh... <laughs> Actually, it's kind of a funny story because I basically ran away from home and quit high school and got a job on Wall Street. So uh, none of this was planned. I had, you know, I had no idea that I would be involved in this business, but I had uh, my cousin call me up when I was working on Long Island uh, and I was working two jobs. So she says, hey, you know, you want to come and interview for this job in New York and you can work in this trading room and then you'll make just as much money with the one job that you're making with the two. And I said, okay. And that was it. You know, I, I ended up going to Donaldson Lupkin Jim Rett, um, 140 Broadway and got interviewed. The guy was ready to uh, let me walk out, but I told him that I had another job that started the next week was, which was the truth. And he gave me the job. And that was the beginning of my career, you know, in this business. Wow. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Pretty yeah. different though. I mean, because um, it's like nowadays, it's really even harder to get into what you just talked about, but you got pretty blessed to be able to get into it the way you did. So yeah, how did you really get focused on, um, on, on what you do now you, as far as your strategy? How did, how did you get to that point? Okay. Well, that actually took quite some time because um, so I worked in New York and they moved me to the uh, trading floor in Chicago. So I worked on the, um, on the CME out there. And I was, you know, basically a phone clerk and then a floor manager, but I didn't start what I do now until I guess it was about after the, it was just a little bit after the crash of 87. Okay. okay so after that, um, you know, the job that I had that, that shut down and I met my mentor, Robert Miner at a conference and I sat there and I looked at what he did and it was kind of like the light bulb went on over my head. And um, I went and I talked to him after the seminar because I thought that the timing work that he talked about was uh, fascinating. We got together and I became his student basically the next day. And I went through you know, his GAN course and learned everything that I could. And uh, next thing you know, people are offering me money for my work. <laughs> right, right. So you were interested in what he was teaching as far as like, um, basically what was he teaching, the Fibonacci and time also? It, it was um, time and price. Okay, time and, and price. And, you know, I, I had always heard about the fact that you can use Fibonacci on the price axis of the market, but I never knew how you could use it on the time axis. And that's what was fascinating because I actually went to my, which I had paper charts at that time in my life, but I, I took those and I would mark off, you know, key highs and lows and I would run the ratios from them and, and look for, you know, when I would get a cluster of, of timing projections and then typically I'd see a change in trend. I mean, not a hundred percent of the time, but, but often enough that you wanted to pay attention to it. Right. Right. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, um, the time thing is almost like, almost like with GAN you're talking about too, kind of like that, right? 
Well, they, they do it a little bit different sometimes in GAN because there's they'll do timing um, with numbers rather than ratios, and I only use the ratios. Okay, I see. Yeah, so the ratio is based a little bit different than using the numbers as far as like days and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so also basically, um, what, what um, markets do you trade? Um, well, I'm doing the uh, like stock index futures and then also quite a few stocks. So I'm doing like the main stocks would be Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, uh, Microsoft, Netflix, Nvidia, Tesla. Um, and then I'll do, you know, some extra stocks beyond that, but I'll basically look at, um, you know, besides my regular list, I'll look at some extra stocks. Uh, typically I have sessions where uh, people are allowed to ask me to look at a particular stock and if I look at it and it sets up, then I'll kind of keep it on the list because, you know, it obviously could make them money if it is setting up. Yeah, right. And is there a certain time frame you really are into? Well, on everything, I'm always going to look at a daily chart for reference. Sometimes I will look at a weekly chart if I need to, like, you know, some of the indexes, I'll, I'll definitely keep track of, you know, some of the bigger picture stuff there. Um, and also, you know, if I can't see enough on a regular daily chart for a particular stock, I'll, you know, open it up to a higher, you know, time frame. Uh, but then after that, I go down to, let's see, 120 minute charts, which work extremely well in the indexes. And then 30 minute charts, sometimes a 15. It just depends on, you know, what I would need for that particular day, because sometimes a chart will set up on the 30 minute. And sometimes you can only see it on, you know, the, the 15 minute. So okay. I'll have to kind of switch back and forth. Right, right. So um, I know like with Fibonacci's and all what you're doing basically, but then, so managing, managing risk. Okay, how do, you, how do you control your risk with, with the strategy that you're using? Okay, well, um, I kind of use this phrase. It's uh, setup plus trigger equals trade entry, and then you manage it. So a setup, I'll show you an example of that when, you know, when I show my charts. Um, you know, it's, it's basically either, you know, a Fibonacci cluster or a, uh, a symmetry setup or a two-step pattern setup. Those are the only three setups that I use, you know, all day long. So I'll look for one of those. Now, if the zone is tested and it then holds, I have them look at a lower time frame chart for a trigger. You know, the trigger is pretty simple. It's, you know, mostly a moving average crossover on the lower time frame chart. But then as far as management, you have to deal with two things. Um, you have to deal with where your initial stop's going to be. You always want to define your risk, okay? And this work is very good for defining risk. Um, but yeah, your, your initial stop, for example, can go either underneath the low made prior to your buy trigger, or it can go underneath the low end of the uh, support zone, you know, if you're looking at the buy side. Then what you have to look at is how am I going to exit the trade? And typically, you know, I have targets of 1272, 1618, and 2618 for trade setups. But I think what you also want to do, you know, is not necessarily just sell because it gets to a target, but I just want you to have a tighter trailing stop because a lot of times we'll make meet the target and then go way beyond. So okay. for example, like in Tesla, I mean, we've gone way beyond the targets that, that I was looking for. And if I would have gotten out at 1272, I'd be pissed. <laughs> you know. Yeah, getting that extra money. So that's what a good yeah. thing for you. But I had a, a case today where um, I'm talking to a lot of probably newer traders, really. Um, we were talking in the chat room and they saw some big moves happening with some of the pound pairs and so forth. So I'm trying to let these guys know about the mental part of trading. And you see a move and you're, you're committed to to that move instead of being committed to your strategy and to everything else because they don't see the bigger picture. So it's a lot of, a lot of mental games with trading. So can you kind of talk about that a little bit real quick? Yeah. Well, one of the ways that I help people to not, you know, get too emotional is I force them to write up a trading plan. Okay. And the trading plan is basically, you know, what, what setups you're going to take, um, what trigger are you going to use? You know, you might use a different moving average crossover than I do or something like that. Um, and then have it written down, you know, are you going to exit half your position at one, two, seven, two extension and then trail the stop on the balance or, or what you have to make those decisions and then just follow through with it. And also, you know, part of the plan is 
if it doesn't hold the zone, get out, yeah. you know, because then it's a bust. See, all that's really like for us, it's easy to say, but these traders now, they, they have a plan, have the, everything they need to do, but when they see something happening, they just want to jump into it. So that's where you get yeah, a lot of that's it, dangerous. Lot of yeah. So I know I want to, uh, people probably want to see and understand more about what you do. So let's just go to your charts. Okay. Let me get the screen share ready. Okay. So this should be screen number five. Okay, so you should probably be able to see uh, the charts here. This is actually the example in um, in Tesla. Okay, this is a daily chart in Tesla, and what we had here was you know one of my setups, which was a Fibonacci price cluster, which means that um, it has the coincidence of at least three Fibonacci price relationships come together within a relatively tight range, and that basically defines your risk. So. This came in at the 1338 to 1366 area. You know, the zone was tested, the zone held. It triggered entries against it with, you know, the lower time frame charts, like either a 15 minute or a 30 minute for a swing trade entry. And, you know, and then obviously we saw, like I said, we saw way more than, than I expected. I mean, I was happy when we got the 1272 target on this, on this one and you, you ended up getting the 1618, and then you're actually getting close to target number three here. But to give you an example of, you know, what you would do now, because, you know, this was a trade that started a few weeks ago, but we're still also looking at the 30-minute charts. Now, to give you an example of uh, one of the shorter-term setups, this is where I'm just using what I like to call symmetry. Symmetry is similarity or equality when comparing swings in the same direction. So basically I'm taking these prior swings and then projecting them from any new high to try and help me get back in, in the direction of the trend. So since this is, you know, this is a bullish chart pattern of higher highs and higher lows, I want to run the projections from any new high for the next buy. So in this case, we did end up having a pullback directly into this support decision which included the symmetry. And sadly, it didn't make the target because my target was going to be the 1272 extension of the swing into the zone. Okay. That came in at 2337. So that's one of the reasons why I always tell people we don't always meet our targets. So you do have to trail up stops as you, as you go. So this one, obviously you would have been stopped out if you used a relatively tight stop, but even though this looks like nothing, this is a rally of 175 bucks in two, in two days Right. Yeah. off of Tesla. Okay. And then I have another one that we're going to look at um, next week, for example. So I've got to set it up again on the buy side until it doesn't work anymore. And right now it's still working. I mean, one day it's going to blow through all of this and people will get stopped out. But right now um, my next decisions are going to come in. Actually, I'm going to break this down a little bit. Uh, 2174 to 86 is your first support decision and we're testing it. So if it continues to hold above here, we're gonna look for a move towards that 1272 extension. So that's one area and you would define risk underneath that. Um, another area that comes in is 2156.66 and then 2117 to 2118. So basically if it tests and holds a decision, we go down to a lower time frame chart. Um, a lot of times we're, you know, looking at uh, one minute and two minute chart triggers uh, for entries against the intraday work. Okay. Now, let's see. let's see. I mean, I can find you another example that, and this is something that you may want to look at, um, you know, in this next week or so. So this is a daily chart of Netflix. Now, my original setup on the daily chart came in down here. And I had a cluster of looks like four, at least four price relationships between 462.65 to 466.45, okay? You know, it tested and held once, it retested and held again, we finally got a move. And what I have to say about this is that the potential is still higher because off of the swing into the August lows, my initial upside target is 604.97. So, since we're not up there, what I want to do is watch this next pullback. What I like about this chart is that price is above the 200 simple moving average. It's above the 50. 
and the 513 um, EMA combo that I use is in a buy mode. And you do have a new pattern of higher highs and higher lows. So the areas that I want to look at for new buy entries, um, I'll, I'll look at 515.92, but an area that really stands out to me is 504.77 to 510.36. And this comes in again from a lot of these prior uh, declines over on the left hand side of the chart projected from the new high. And then there is also, I believe, a 618 retracement of this low to high. So I like when symmetry overlaps a 618 retracement. That's actually a, a, a very good setup. And Interesting. yeah, I mean, do you want me to show you any other charts or do you have um, specific questions? Let me ask you a couple of questions about what you just were talking about. Basically, um, so I keep hearing you say clusters. What do you mean clusters? What are you talking about clusters? Okay. So Fibonacci price cluster is the coincidence of at least three Fibonacci price relationships within a relatively tight range. Okay, so it could be, uh, I mean, the price relationships I run are retracements and then extensions, which are essentially retracements beyond 100%. And then I also run price projections from three points. So when I run all possible uh, price relationships off the key highs and lows on the chart, you know, that's when I'll look for, you know, like the clustering effect, like, like I'm looking at right here at that, you know, 504, 510 area. Okay, and a, a, that cluster is a setup, and if it holds and it triggers an entry, we're going to take that trade. And then at least we know that our risk definition is right below the zone. If it breaks that, then that trade is a bust. So if you're entering that trade and it breaks that level, then you're out. No, nope. yes, no yeah, around. okay, yeah. The, the setups actually define the risk, right? So when your stop loss is set, pretty much, um, it's based off of. The how is it based off of? It's not based off of um, a percentage. It's just based off of what you got going on with your um, setups, right? Well, you could do it a different way if you like. But what I like to do is so let's say for example we trade down into this area, okay, and then you know the market stabilizes and then on a 15 minute chart it triggers a buy entry, okay. Well, then you have the choice to either have the stop underneath the low made before the buy triggered off, okay? Or underneath the low end of the zone, which in this case would be 504.77. Either way is acceptable, you know, for me. I mean, that's the way I've written up the plan. Okay. So we didn't, I noticed that, like I said, you didn't, you don't do much Forex. So, um, and does this still work with Forex? Would it be good for Forex trading also? Yeah, I, I have done some of it in the past. I have also worked with, um, you know, the currency futures in the past. And it does work very well. A lot of those markets um, have some great trends sometimes. And as long as you follow the trend instead of trying to buck it, you know, then it's, it, that would be a great one, especially to use the symmetry projections on. So what if the market's like not trending? What, what do you do? Well, you can still run levels. You know, I, I'd rather see something that's trending than sideways or, you know, something that you can at least define some, some risk. So you can always look at a market and, and if it's not trending on the daily, it might look more of a trend on the hourly per se. So would you be yeah. able to project like that? Yeah, you can absolutely go to the lower time frame charts. And, uh, you know, there are some people that are even using this like on a five minute chart and taking five minute um, symmetry setups and that type of thing. Okay. So like on a typical day, what do you, what, how's your typical day? Do you, when you get up, what do you basically do? You start looking right at the charts or is there some kind of routine or whatever you do? How do you? Yeah. Do you well, I do make myself a cup of tea because my voice is really bad in the morning, but typically I go to, um, I'll, I'll start by looking at the indexes and where we're at there. And I mean, here's like an example of um, the pullback that we had set up in the S&P futures today via the 120 minute chart. So this again is all about the symmetry. And what I did was I took all these prior swings, you know, within the larger uptrend and I projected them from this high. And there were a couple of areas that stood out and one of them was here, you know, where it hit and held this support. And then if you went to a lower time frame chart, like actually my futures traders some of them are using a 377 tick chart to trigger an entry. 
And once it triggers, again, you can have a stop underneath this low. And then you want to trail it up as you go. But the potential upside target is the 1272 extension at 35.17. And then there's a the second target would be the 1618 at 35.27. OK. So can you show us something like um, something that that didn't work out for you and explain to us what the, what you think the issues may have been or why it didn't work out? Well, I usually don't keep those lines on the chart, but I will show you um, something that didn't because we had to take this from one decision to the next after we had tested that support um, on the 120 minute chart. I also had to look at the resistance and what could get in the way on the way up. So I had run the retracements of these prior swings. So there were a few of these that I had to run, okay. And then we also had, let's see, I took 100% of that prior rally swing, projected it from there. And then also we had this low to this high. Um, okay, well that came in quite a ways above, but this was the area that we were watching for a possible failure. Okay, because on one time frame chart, yes, it was a bullish 120 minute chart. And, you know, I set it up on that chart on the buy side. But on this time frame chart, okay, different time frames are going to give you different setups and different information. Well, this was a bearish pattern of lower lows and lower highs into that support. And we had to acknowledge that instead of just continuing to rally from that support, that we might fail. Because at this point, you know, as long as it didn't take out that prior swing high, that was still a bearish chart on this time frame. This was a 15 minute chart. So what happened was that initially we did come off of this area and there was a 10 and a quarter point decline from that. You only would have made money if you were, um, you know, a scalper or, you know, nimble. Mm -hmm. uh, but once it came back through, that was a bust. Right. Yeah, that chart at that point it did look pretty bearish though. So. <laughs> it, it did, at least on that time frame. Yeah. But if you look at both time frames, you're gonna have all the information you need and then you just take it from one decision to the next. Now I don't see anything on your charts except like the moving averages. So do you do you use any other indicators or how do you like it if you're gonna um I do look at this the squeeze indicator, uh, but not on these charts because it's not inside of this program. Um yeah, I just pretty much look at the moving averages and, and maybe the squeeze indicator. Uh, the other stuff, I don't really do a heck of a lot with it, you know, because I'm just sticking with the, the levels and then, you know, the simple trigger of which I have, um, I have a YouTube channel with a bunch of free videos on it. And that will actually go through, uh, there's a video that, that teaches you about how to trigger against this work. And there's also another video that goes through all my basics of, you know, what I do with this analysis and you'll get a better under, understanding of, you know, where it's all coming from. Okay, good. So let's see if, um, if some of these, anyone has any questions. So somebody asked me, somebody says, and they want to know, he said, I get stopped out often using Fibonacci's when I trade Forex pairs, but with stocks, it seems the Fibs areas are respected. Is it me or is it, or is it Forex a different bird? Any suggestions? You know, I, I haven't looked at too much of it recently, but I, I would have to look at, well, first of all, what time frame are you talking about? Because I have noticed that the really small time frames are not really great to work with um, unless you are dealing with the um, currency futures, but the Forex data is kind of a different animal. So I would stick with, you know, maybe a 60 or 120 minute chart or, or daily chart for my decisions. Okay. Um, I have seen it work a lot with, um, you know, like the euro, the the symmetry and stuff. But I guess you'd have to show me an example and and what time frame you're talking about. Yeah, um, I don't see too many other questions right now. Someone else is asking. Let's see. So they want to know. Let's see, Car um, Carolyn, where you can you show us your um, website and some of the things. Oh. Take us to your YouTube too, also. Okay. Yeah. So let me grab YouTube. All right, so it's just under my name. And, you know, here are the videos that you should watch. If you're interested in timing, this is pretty in depth. It's uh, just over an hour. 
This one is like an example of the type of presentation that I do for the money show. So this goes over all the basics, you know, my retracements, my extensions and all that. And then it goes through examples. Um, let's see, symmetry is a very, very simple tool yet very powerful. And then on the next page, you know, there's a couple things like, you know, you can, how to set up the, the um, you know, tools in Thinkorswim. And then the other one that you want to watch is how to use triggers. Okay, so that, and then um, there's a couple places that you can find me. I'm kind of like all over the place. So let me get rid of this first. Okay. So you can either find me on um, FibonacciQueen.com. And I also do uh, some work with ElliotWaveTrader.net. So this now, is FibonacciQueen.com they can go to? Yeah, they can go to that or they can go to ElliotWaveTrader.net. ElliotWaveTrader.net. Okay, so I didn't ask you, but how did you get that name Fibonacci Queen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, had, I was doing a seminar in Chicago one year and there was this uh, very distinguished uh, doctor in the back of the room and... Um, and he was Iranian. And I just remember that he was like, ah, oh, Queen Fibonacci. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then when it was time to, um, uh, and then he kind of changed it to, oh, Fibonacci Queen, what do you think of this? So, so it was him. And, um, and then when it was time to, uh, you know, set up a, a website, everyone was like, oh, well, you know, what should we name it instead of such and such? And I was like, well, I said Fibonacci Queen, but I think it's a little too obnoxious. And they're like, no, no, it's catchy. <laughs> yeah, I like it. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let me see. There's a couple more questions. Let's see if there's any. How do you feel about trading uh, fibs with cri uh, cryptocurrencies? Um, I haven't done much with that. I, I can show you a chart, though. Let's see. It's not this group of charts. I think it's under here okay so i have started watching the um the bitcoin futures i know that a while back i did some work um you know on this chart but it's just a continuous chart i don't have the other kind of um, data but in this example um you're clearly above the 200 simple you're above the 50 the five well no the five and 13 actually cross to the downside but the general pattern is bullish. So what we want to do here is, again, take all of these prior uh, declines within the uptrend and then project them from the recent high to look for the next possible support. Now, there might even be an additional level here. I haven't updated. Yep, there's another 100% projection right there. And, you know, you can also go ahead and see if there's, um, you know, maybe a a retracement that might also overlap. Uh, that one you're through, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. But this would be like the next key decision. We're on top of it right here, right now. Uh, we're holding, it's not a perfect hit, but we're holding above it. So let's say if it continues to hold above this area, my initial upside target's going to be the 1272 extension of the swing into this um, you know, zone. And that's up here. Okay. Let me see any other questions real quick. Someone asked, was that the John Carter squeeze indicator you're talking about? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they have it on, on Thinkorswim, but I've actually started looking at the other one. The, um, what's the one? It's, it, it's a new updated version of, of the squeeze. You know, it, it, it definitely gives you more signals, which is kind of cool. And then the last question I'm going to ask is, um, someone says, I have um, just finished reading your book. And I know of the squeeze indicator. Do you use just the TTM squeeze or also the other TTM indicators like TTM waves? And then also, how do you use the squeeze indicator as a filter? I guess he asked. Well, let's, let's take a peek. Let's see if I can give you an example. Um, you can actually use the squeeze as a trigger to my work. So like, let's say for example, um, well, this might not be a good one. Let's see that. I know Tesla's had plenty of squeezes. Okay, so this is this is an example on the daily chart. But here, like if you have um, you have the squeeze over here, and here's your first green dot. This is where it starts. Um, you can use that as a trigger against any support that you have. You know that's that's one thing. But if you want it to be closer to 
um, you know where your definition of risk is, you're probably going to have to use a lower, a lower time frame chart. So yeah, basically, if the squeeze, let's say you pull back into the support zone, and the squeeze fires off, you can actually use that for a signal. Okay. And then I do, I do use. I'm, I'm playing with the, the new one. This is not the regular. This is the Squeeze Pro. Okay. Yeah, I guess he knows a little bit about it because he must have been using it. But um, yeah. Very interesting, Carolyn. I like your work, and I already knew about you, so that's why I wanted to talk to you on the show. So I really enjoyed talking with you. Last thing, can you tell if um, if people want to become members of your um, website, what actually what do they get what is involved with the membership or whatever um it's pretty much um live charts during the day you know and so you'll see some you can't see all of the charts because if i do 40 charts i can't squeeze those into one screen but i usually keep up six charts and it's uh, facebook apple tesla um amazon you know nvidia and netflix that's what i'm doing lately plus typically i'm also doing the charts in the um, index futures. So I do that during the day. I do a stock picking session once a week where for an hour they get to ask for, um, you know, or requests of, of charts that they want to look at and we'll see if it's setting up or not. And then I do a pretty, uh, or I do talk at least once a day in the room, you know, and go over the charts and explain some of them and I'm there for questions. And then I do the end of day video and, um, that basically goes over everything in preparation for the next day. Okay, so you offer some good, very good things. So if yeah. you wanna learn how to trade Fibonacci's the proper way, this is the person you wanna learn from. So again, your, her website, she just told you the two sites, FibonacciQueen.com, right? Yep. And ElliottWaveTrader.com, so. Dot net. Dot net, so that's where you'll be able to find her at. And yeah. she also has the book out. So. That's how you can reach Carolyn. And we really appreciate her for being on the show today. So Carolyn, thank you for your time. And thank you for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having me and have a great weekend. You too, no problem. Have a great one. God bless. Okay.